Hey YouTube, welcome back to Wiles HVAC and Stuff. Uh, today we're going to continue on a little bit what we started earlier in the week uh, with some of the simple service calls. Uh, you know, there's a lot of those calls out there that we get that people say, well, my, my furnace is squealing or, or making funny noises, something like that. There's a lot of different options on what it could be. Uh, there's several different motors in there, a couple different uh, items that can make a lot of noise. There's a lot of options, but one of the more common ones that we do see, and uh, we'll hit up on some of the other ones as well, but some of the common ones uh, we see is an inducer assembly. Um, these things can make a lot of noise when they do start having some issues, uh, but with that inducer assembly itself, uh, what that does is it pushes the flue gases out of the furnace and out of the house. Um, it actually draws the combustion air into the furnace for the burners um, and then make sure everything's out. Uh, that way uh, the furnace is safe uh, to operate and everything. We have a, a standard uh, high RPM motor on there. Uh, we have a cooling wheel on the end and then internally inside the casing we have uh, the wheel itself that's actually moving the air. Uh, with those inducers you can actually have a couple different things uh, fail on them. Uh, most, most common is usually the bearings in that motor. Um, like I said, these things do see a lot of heat uh, and they are fairly high RPM. Most of them are 2800, uh, 34, 3500 RPMs. Uh, so they're moving pretty quick. Uh, but the bearings in there start getting uh, worn or dry, whatever it may be. They start squealing, making noises uh, and different things. Uh, and that's where a lot of that squealing noise comes from. Uh, you can have that happen to them. The motor, the motor itself, they, the, they can fail electric, electrically, uh, where the windings in that motor either short um, or they're open uh, internally, then the motor just will not run, uh, which usually comes from either a power issue in the home or the bearings themselves have locked up and the thing just kept trying. It got too hot and destroyed itself. Um, on a few rare occasions, or not really rare, but not an every day by any means. Uh, the impeller in, inside there, the, um, the fan wheel itself can break or come apart or come loose from the, the shaft of the motor. Uh, at that point, the whole assembly has to be replaced. Just the same as uh, the motor or anything on here. Uh, these things come as one piece anymore. Uh, used to, there were some of the furnaces, especially the 80% furnaces, you could replace just the motor or just the wheel, uh, whatever, but with these anymore, pretty much everything is one piece. Uh, they want you to throw this item away, buy a new one, and there you go. Uh, so that's one of the more common ones. Uh, like I said, uh, we went over a couple of the options of what can happen to it uh, here in a minute. I'm going to show you how to actually pull that out of there uh, and, and reinstall one uh, as well as uh, full checkout as far as voltage amperage things like that um, as far as tools today really the only major things we're going to need is a couple of nut drivers uh, length of your choice whatever your preference is a uh, quarter and five sixteenths obviously a common size in heating and air industry so uh, what well, your choice there and then your basic multimeter or uh, amp clamp whatever you want to use for this uh, should work fine uh, up on the screen there, I think I'll probably advertise what uh, model I use, uh, but that's about all we'll need today. Uh, and a little bit of silicone to make sure everything's sealed when we're all done. Uh, other than that, let's see what we can do. All right, so inside the furnace itself, uh, the placement and orientation is going to be a little bit different on each one. It depends on what kind of furnace you're looking at, uh, what brand, what style. There's a lot of differences going on there, but as far as how they work, uh, their general operation is pretty much the same in all of them. Um, it's just a matter of what you're what you're working on, as far as what it's going to take to get it out of there. Uh, like I said before, your inducer assembly there um, mounts to your collector box in the back, which once we get that out of there, we'll be able to see it a little bit better. Uh, modern furnaces, if you hadn't noticed, and those guys that are out there already, uh, they know that uh, they are making furnaces smaller and smaller, so uh, it makes it harder and harder for us to work on. There's just not enough room. But either way, um, it mounts on the collector box back there. Uh, this happens to be a, a downflow furnace, so our burners are down here on the bottom. Uh, the burners basically shoot into the primary heat exchanger, uh, run through that tubular exchanger up into the secondary, uh, and then the secondary is behind that collector box, and that's where the outlet is, and that inducer is drawing, as the burners are running, is drawing air in through the burners, uh, through the heat exchanger, up and out the inducer, and out the house. 
so that's how we're actually getting the flue gases out of the house, but it's also bringing the draft in for the furnace for the burners to actually burn. Um, if you do go to replace one, uh, you absolutely have to make sure you go back with the same one. Uh, you don't want to try to mix and match brands and sizes and different uh, motors out there because whatever that furnace was made for, that's what it needs to have. If you start changing the RPM or the horsepower, how much airflow you're actually moving through there, you can uh, do a lot of damage to the furnace. Uh, you can actually cause it to burn poorly, uh, which could cause carbon monoxide. Uh, there's a lot of different things that could go wrong there. So if you are going to replace one, go back, through, back with the exact same thing. Uh, most of these inducers anymore, I said before that the uh, bearings are usually the most common. Uh, most everything is sealed bearings these days so there's not actually any oilers in there uh, to oil the old ones you used to be able to uh, that was actually a much nicer feature that they used to have uh, that they've kind of taken away I've, I'm a big fan of oilers on motors uh, they seem like they last a lot longer um, so as far as checking this thing out um, So we're going to check this inducer out and see how it's actually doing. Uh, what I want to do right now is check the uh, amperage on there. Uh, what we're going to do is take our amp clamp, uh, set it to amps, which hopefully you're familiar with your meter already. We may have a video later on uh, about making sure you are comfortable with your meter. I, I use a basic field piece meter. I've talked about it before. Always been a big field piece fan. Uh, they've always done me right. So uh, that's what we're, we're doing there. We're setting that to amperage. Uh, we're going to take our wire going straight to the inducer, clamp on there, and we can read what we're, what that motor is actually drawing. So it looks like we're drawing just a little over 2.5 amps, uh, about 2.7 amps. Um, that motor, if we look at the side of it, uh, looks like full load amps is 2.8. So if we're drawing 2.7, I'd say we're doing pretty good. Uh, these assemblies are a uh, 120 volt motor on most all of them uh, so you can check your voltage coming in this one's obviously running so we know that you know we have power to it but they are a 120 volt motor uh, you can check your amperage when if the bearings start failing uh, you do start um, getting a higher amp draw and a lot of times doing regular maintenance uh, you can find those issues and replace that assembly before it causes any major problems so as far as replacing the assembly now itself uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this stuff out of, out of the way here uh, we've got our pressure switch tubes uh, we've got four screws that screw it in or hold it down to the collector box there back there down there i know it's hard to see we're kind of cramped in here so very quickly i'm going to take all those out all right, so I've taken my four screws out. Uh, they're, like I said, they're all a little bit different. This is just this particular furnace, but there's one long bolt in there and there's one short one. Uh, you can see where they go if you have that furnace whenever you do it. Um, I've already taken all four of those out. I've loosened my hose clamp up here that attaches me to that boot to be able to get everything out. Uh, we're gonna get our pressure switch hoses out of the way. The power's already been shut off to the furnace. I'm going to disconnect the connectors. I've already disconnected the ground wire. It should slide out of there. So once that's out of there, you can see that that's our collector box back there behind the inducer itself. 90% uh, furnaces, uh, those collector boxes, they are plastic. Um, it has to be able to handle the moisture and the condensation coming out of there because any 90 plus efficient furnace is considered a condensing furnace and there is water. Uh, that gasket there, whenever you take these inducers off, uh, that gasket should be replaced. Uh, I usually recommend a little bit of silicone on there. Uh, whatever it takes, we don't want that thing leaking because then it starts dripping down on the burner box. Uh, when you do that, you get rust, corrosion, everything looks like crap. Um, so. Whenever you replace one, it goes right back in in the reverse order what we just took it out. Uh, make sure all your screw holes, bolt holes are lined up. Uh, that's the hard part is just getting it uh, fixed and fitted in there. Uh, make sure your boot that it goes into, make sure it's clear. It doesn't have any debris or junk in it. Uh, make sure that the um, uh, boot is on there nice and tight. Um, obviously, there's water in there now while you've got it apart. Uh, check your drains, make sure your drains are good, and start it back up and see how it does. And there's replacing the inducer assembly.
All right, guys, so that takes care of inducer assemblies. Uh, I hope we have a little more understanding as far as what the inducer assemblies are, what they do, um, how to check them, and how to replace them. Uh, we definitely want to make sure we're doing everything the right way out there. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share as much as possible. Also, check us out on Wiles HVAC and stuff.blogspot.com. Uh, read up on the blog, but again, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you and God bless.